Hi there. Today I'm going to give you a quick overview of the new Forerunner 165 series. A lot of this information is also going to apply to our 265 and 965, but we wanted to give you a quick overview for some tools, tips, and tricks. Let's get started. So, inside the box, you are going to find a Forerunner 165 series watch, the quick start manual, a USB-C to proprietary Garmin and charger, and uh, a safety and informational guide. Let's move these to the side and get focused on the watch. First thing I like to do here is always remove this cling. It's kind of a great moment whenever you get a new piece of tech. And you can go ahead and unclasp the buckle and remove the watch from the packaging. Let's go ahead and get this 4165 turned on and connected to Garmin Connect so you can get ready and go for a run. To power on the device, press the top left button and hold it for about three seconds. It's gonna show the Garmin logo and then our awesome boot animation that we introduced on the 4965 and 4265. After this, you're gonna get a prompt with a list of languages. And you can either scroll up and down on that list using your finger on the touchscreen or you can use the middle left and lower bottom left buttons to scroll up and down. I'm gonna go ahead and select yes to English, and to do so, you can either click on it or press the top right button to select. Next, it's gonna ask us to pair a phone. Go ahead and say yes again, and you can take your phone, and with your camera app, just simply scan and click to open Garmin Connect. Next, it's going to give you a prompt to connect the device. You can hit select to connect, and then make sure that the pin matches with your Bluetooth. Hit pair. Allow notifications if you want. And then hit next. So you're getting a prompt here for primary wearable. And what this means is if you have more than one Garmin device, it's basically going to list them in a priority order to make sure that the sync, uh, when you sync your uh, metrics like steps and stress and body battery, that they're uh, synced in the correct order so that the, uh, the data flow is most accurate. So we're going to go ahead and say yes to that. And then confirm uh, your sleep schedule. So for me, it's going to bed pretty early and waking up super early. And then we're gonna hit sync now for a final sync and hit finish. You're then gonna get a prompt with a simple walkthrough of the device, but since there's some really great features we wanna dive into, we're gonna go ahead and set skip and do these on the watch. We unboxed a Forerunner 165 non-music edition. However, one of my favorite features on Garmin watches is the ability to save and download music directly to the watch. So. If you purchased a 4165 Music Edition, what you're also going to want to do after initial setup is go through and get connected to Wi-Fi. That way you can download and save music directly to the watch from one of your favorite music providers and not have to carry your phone when you're next out on a run. So, in order to do so, you're going to want to press and hold this middle left button to bring up the menu, and then you're going to scroll down all the way until you see connectivity. Select connectivity, scroll down to Wi-Fi, and then go to My Networks. Then search for networks. And this is gonna look around you and find your home network, and then you can go ahead and connect to it. We're gonna select Garmin Guests, since we're here at headquarters, and then get connected that way. Once connected, you're actually gonna to wanna to go to the Garmin Connect IQ app and Choose from your favorite provider and follow the on-screen steps to go ahead and get that app downloaded and music onto your device. You can also visit support.garmin.com for more information. All right, so we showed you a little bit of what the 4165 Music has to offer on the music capabilities, but we're going to move back to the 4165 that we unboxed originally to go through the rest of the features. Let's go over how to quickly use the device. The 4165 has our tried and true five button design as well as the built-in touchscreen, which helps you to better and quickly navigate through the device. The top right button is start and stop as well as enter. The bottom right button is back. The top left button is the backlight button as well as pressing and holding it will bring up a control menu. The middle left button is up. The bottom left button is down, but 
If you press and hold the middle left button, it will bring up a menu. And the menu is relative to wherever you are within the watch. So if you are in a widget glance, it will bring up a menu that is relative to that glance. So let's start scrolling through the watch and talk about some of the great features that the 165 has. Starting at the top, we have performance. This is gonna give you something that a lot of people are huge fans of, which is race time prediction. So if we go into the glance by selecting, you're going to see your VO2 max estimation, and then scrolling down, you're going to see a 5K prediction, a 10K prediction, a half, and a full marathon prediction. I love this because it gives me an easy way to track kind of where my fitness is at over the last four weeks. To go back, you're going to want to hit that back button, or you can swipe out of the glance by swiping to the right. Next, we have the recovery glance. And so this is going to give you an estimation on when you should next do a hard effort. So for me, it says 22 hours, and it's taking into account the fact that I already ran this morning. Next, we have HRV status. This is a really, really popular feature with a lot of people. If you want to learn more about it, I would reference back to our other videos on this channel. But a quick overview is this is going to give you a glance on your, your current health in relation to the stresses and workouts that you're going through. Um, and it's, it's a really cool feature that a lot of people love. The next glance is the, uh, the race widget. So this is pretty cool. After you've done about two weeks of training with the device, you can start getting daily suggested workouts that actually target uh, your training towards a race once you have it entered on Garmin Connect. For me, my next race is coming up in a couple of weeks, and so it's giving me a countdown, an estimated completion time, and it's also going to give you some weather information as well. The closer you get to the event, the more accurate the weather forecast is going to get, so long as you have the location entered as well. And swiping back to the right to get out of the glance. The next glance is the race calendar, and this is where you can house all the races you have planned for the year. It's going to give you a nice overview of when they are and dates. And uh, also, if you click into them, you can kind of see some of the information that's previously referenced in the race widget above. Next, you have a notification tray, which houses all the notifications from your phone to your watch. Then the weather. I really like the weather glance, so let's jump into it a little bit. Once you enter, you're going to see an overview of the current temperature, the high, the low, and then the wind and precipitation. Scrolling through this, you're going to see an hourly forecast, daily forecast, and then also some air quality, dew point, humidity, and UV index information. Really cool information to have right on the wrist. Scrolling out, next thing is music controls. So even if you don't have a 400 165 music variant, you can still control the music on your phone if you bring that with you with a non-music watch. This is just gonna show us what's playing currently on your phone and you can skip or pause or play using your uh, device. So scrolling back, next we have body battery. So body battery is gonna give you a score out of 100 to show how ready you are to take on that day at that moment. We introduced recently body battery factors, which is gonna show you the net impact that an activity recorded with the watch has on your body battery. Scrolling out, next we have heart rate. So this glance is going to give you an indication of what your current heart rate is, what your resting heart rate is, and then if you scroll down, a seven-day average heart rate uh, window to show what your resting heart rate is each day. Now scrolling out, next we have tried and true steps. So you're going to see what your current step count is for the day and then your step goal. And if you dive into that glance, you're going to be able to see what your step streak is and then your average daily distance in miles. Next, we have the sleep score widget. So diving in, you're gonna get a quick overview of what your sleep score was, and then some other metrics about your sleep. You can scroll through this glance and see numerous information about sleep stages, how they align with the previous nights, and then also some uh, weekly trends as well. If you scroll back to that first page, clicking the top right-hand button will bring up a mini menu that gives you a sleep insight as well. So all great things to be able to access right on the watch. Scrolling down, we have our new nap glance. So you can now record naps either manually or have them be captured automatically by the device. To start a manual nap, you're gonna to wanna to enter the glance, hit enter again, and hit start nap. If you wanna have it automatically captured, just take a nap. 
Scrolling down from there, I have a weekly running mileage uh, glance. This is going to show my last run, and then if you want to jump in there, you can also scroll through and see what you've done for the week so far. Then there's an edit. The edit button allows you to add more glances. So if you hit enter, you can scroll through the list that what we just went over, and then you can add more and customize your watch completely to your liking. So say I wanted to go ahead and add stress as a glance, I can scroll to that, either hit enter or select it on screen. Once that's been selected, you can scroll down and hit done. Then stress is gonna show up as a glance for you in that uh, list of glances that we just covered. Then scrolling up one more time brings you back to the home screen. Another thing I wanna quickly cover is the control menu. So as we discussed before, press and hold the backlight button to bring up the control menu. You can then scroll through the wheel using your hand on the touchscreen or using the up and down buttons on the left side. Here, you can quickly power off the device, lock it, or access the clocks to set an alarm, timer, or stopwatch. Once you're done in here, you can either scroll back or hit that back button to get back to the home screen. All right, you're probably all wondering, how do I go for a run? So from the home screen, you're gonna to wanna to press the start stop button. This is gonna bring up a list of activities. We have some pre-selected ones like run, track run, and treadmill, but if you scroll down, you're gonna see a whole bunch of other activities that you can use with this watch. And for even more, scroll down to add, and you can see we have a huge list for you to choose from for whatever you're wanting to do with your watch. Let's go back and start a run. So like we said, press start stop and then select run. It's gonna give you a daily suggestion, which you can manually turn off if you don't want. But for me, it's saying rest. I ran already this morning, so I'm gonna go ahead and dismiss this, this notification. And here you have a pre-run menu. So before you start your activity, you always wanna make sure that the GPS is connected. You know it's connected when this bar is fully green. From here, you can also see that the phone is connected and that it's searching for heart rate. If I had it on the wrist, that heart rate would also be solid. From here, you can scroll down and see what these data fields are gonna look like before you go for a run. And you can scroll through and then back. When you're ready to go for a run, you go ahead and hit that start stop button again. When you're ready to pause or finish your run, press it one more time. This is gonna bring up the final menu. And so, as you can see here, the touchscreen is disabled. During an activity out of the box, the touchscreen is disabled during activities. I'm not gonna save this activity, so we can scroll all the way down and hit discard. All right, now let's go through the data fields because these are all fully customizable and you can set it up exactly the way you want so that whenever you're out on a run, the data that you're seeing in all, all of the screens is what's most important to you. In order to do so, press and hold the menu button, which is the middle left button. This is gonna bring up the menu for the running activity. You're gonna go to run settings and data screens. Here, you're gonna see the layout of what you would see if you're within a run. You can hit this little pencil to edit the layout and the data fields or reorder them if you already like what's on the screen. First, let's go through the layout. You have various layout options on the 4165 series from one data field all the way up to four. You can quickly glance through them just by scrolling. Let's stick with four. Next, we're gonna actually change the data that's being presented on the screen. So to do so, hit that pencil icon, scroll down to data fields, and then the data field that's being edited will start to flash. If you scroll up and down, you can see that it will move through the screen until you get to what you'd like to change. For me, I don't wanna see total distance. I would rather see lap distance. So in order to edit that, I wait till it's flashing by scrolling to it, hit enter, and then scroll to distance fields. Hit enter again, and scroll down to lap distance. Once I've confirmed that's what I want, you select it, and there you go. It's already automatically updated. 
Another quick and easy way to change the data fields on the device is to use Garmin Connect. So, once you have Connect open, you're going to want to go to the settings and go to Current Activity. From here, select Data Screens. You can quickly see that the three uh, screens we have available to edit are the one we're on, the secondary one, and then the clock. So we're going to go ahead and select the one that we're currently in. And from here, we can change anything. So we can change the layout. It's going to automatically update on the watch. And then we can go through and change what data we want to see. I like to do this in Garmin Connect because it's a very easy way to get this done and you don't have to click and mess with all the buttons. So here we can go and change through and say, let's do the heart rate gauge. And as you saw, it updated instantly on the watch. So very easy to get your watch looking exactly the way that you want. To get back out, we hit that back button, back again, all the way to the home screen. Another thing you can set up on the 4165 are alerts. For example, you can set up a run walk alert. So you can say, hey, every three minutes I want to run and then an alert to tell me when to start walking an alert to tell me when to start running again. We can quickly do this by going back to the run settings. So to do that, we're going to hit that start stop button again and make sure we're on run. Press and hold the left middle button to bring up the menu and select Run Settings. From here, scroll down to Alerts, Add New, and there's a list of various alerts that you can set, but we want to do the Run Walk Timer. So select the Run Walk Timer, select the Run Time, and then it's going to ask you to select the amount of time that you want to run for. So let's say we're going to run for seven minutes. Next, it's going to tell you to set the walk time. And I think we're going to do one minute. So now, when you start a run activity, it's going to alert you. You're going to walk for one minute, and then it'll start that seven minute timer again for running, and so on and so forth. To back out, we can scroll all the way out or hit that back button. Once you've been using the 4165 for about two weeks, you're going to start getting daily suggested workouts. These workouts dynamically adapt based upon your recovery and your training to give you guided help on how to become a better runner. We've been giving you a brief overview of the 4165 non-music edition. It comes in these two colorways. If you wanted the 4165 in music, you get the option of all four of these colorways. This was a brief overview of the 4165 series. There's a whole lot more that this watch can do, so please visit Garmin.com to learn more. Thanks for watching. Be yesterday.